Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, saints and holy ones of God. Now clouds, they come in many different types. There's stratus and cirrus and cumulus and nimbus and many more types of clouds in the sky. And yet the word cloud also has a metaphorical meaning as well. Most recently, the word cloud refers to all the data, right, that's on the internet, right? If something is stored in the cloud, that means no matter where you are, as long as you have a computer or some other device that is connected to the internet, you can access all that information. Because it's in the cloud. Why, when you do a search on the internet, type in what you're searching for and you can have millions of results, often in less than one second. Of course, we know that all those files, all that data, all that information isn't stored on a literal cloud. In fact, The number of servers is now more than 100 million throughout the world where all that data and all that information is stored in or on the cloud. Well, this morning, God's Word invites us to consider a different cloud, this cloud of witnesses that surround us, this cloud of witnesses those saints that are with the Lord. We read in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So again, who is this cloud of witnesses? Every believer, every saint that is with the Lord in glory. They fought the good fight. They finished the race. They have kept the faith. And now they are in the presence of their Lord and Savior. And yes, this great cloud of witnesses includes those people that we think of from the Scriptures, the great heroes of the faith. But this great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us is also those that we know and love who are with the Lord in eternal glory. Now, just like when we talk about data and files being stored in the cloud, it's an enormous amount of data. Well, so is this cloud of witnesses. Our scripture says it is a great cloud of witnesses. Millions and millions of people from every tribe and nation and people and language that are with the Lord. They're all part of of this cloud, this great cloud of witnesses, so that we can look to them for encouragement. For you see, those that are a part of that great cloud of witnesses, they're like you and me. God claimed them as His own in the waters of holy baptism. They were adopted into God's forever family. They were clothed in that white robe of righteousness. They were forgiven. God sustained them through every trial and sorrow by His Word, by His Holy Supper. And now this great cloud of witnesses. The saints in heaven are God's gift to you and me 
and to every saint on earth. Because as our scripture says for today, Christian life, it's a marathon, it's a race. A race with the finish line being heaven itself. And we need all the encouragement we can find to run this race. Now, obviously, the Christian life is not a sprint, it's a marathon, isn't it? A lifelong marathon. Now, if you go to a race, or if there is a race, there's a marathon, there's going to be a lot of spectators who are watching the runners, cheering them on. Now, when we talk about this great cloud of witnesses, it's similar to that, but it's, all, it's a little different. Because here on earth, a regular race, a regular marathon, the spectators are the ones watching the runners. Cheering them on. But of course, that's not the way it works with the saints in heaven. If they saw all our trials and struggles, if they were looking down on us, that would rob them of their joy. When they saw us struggling, filled with sorrow and sadness. No, as we run the race that is set before us, we are the ones looking Looking to the great cloud of witnesses. Looking to those who are with the Lord. So that by their encouragement, by their example, we would keep on running and pressing on for the heavenly prize. And we need that encouragement. We need that example. Because the temptation is always there to give up to quit running, to not press on for the heavenly prize. And we have to realize that, and we have to consider that this morning. How's your running? Are you running that race of faith? Or have you given up? Have you gotten off track? Has sin tripped you up? Would you say about yourself, would others say about you, that the heavenly goal is my number one priority in life? Living a God-pleasing life, that's what I want to do. Receiving God's gift through word and sacrament, that's what I want to do because that's what the cloud of witnesses teaches us. That's the example that they give to us. That's why our text for today contains that warning. That as we run this race, We we are called to lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Yes, the devil, the world, and even our own sinful flesh are tempting us all the time, trying to trip us up, trying to get us off course. And of course, our text today talks about our sin as being a weight. No one would run a marathon with weights around their ankles. And yet that's what our scripture says our sin is. That our sin weighs us down, slows us down as we run the race that is set before us. That our sin, as it weighs us down, slows us down, may even get us to the point of giving up altogether. Just quit running. So concerned about things in this world that we don't have any care about the world to come. The reality is there have been plenty of times, you and I would all admit, when we have been tripped up by our sin, when we have been weighed down by our sin, when the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh has tempted us and we have yielded to those temptations, when we have veered off course, But you know what? This is something I really appreciate about the saints, these great heroes of faith in the Scripture. Because when the Bible describes those saints of old, it's not like they're portrayed as saints 
if you will, in the way that people normally understand it. Perfect people, right? Never doing anything wrong. No, the Bible is completely honest, completely transparent. Yes, it will hold forth their great deeds that were inspired and empowered by the Holy Spirit, but the Bible is going to tell you about every one of their faults and their failings, those times when they did get tripped up by sin. And that's encouragement for you and me too. Because when we look to the saints and see their sins, their failures, what that testifies to is God's faithfulness. God's mercy and grace. Yes, we look to the cloud of witnesses and we see that God was gracious to them. And so God is gracious to you. We see that God forgave and restored them. You can be confident that when you come before your Lord with a repentant heart, He forgives and restores you. God sustained and strengthened that great cloud of witnesses through trials and troubles and sufferings and sorrows and persecution. And through His Word and through His Supper, God will do the same For you. Yes, we are surrounded by this great cloud. But as our text says, it is a great cloud of witnesses. So who are they witnessing to? Yes, we look to this great cloud of witnesses, and they're all pointing us to Jesus. Because it was Jesus who was their rock, their fortress, and their might as they lived in this world. It was Jesus who was their captain in the well-fought fight. It was Jesus who was their light in the dark and difficult times of their life. And this great cloud of witnesses, witnesses to Jesus, points us to Jesus Because as our text says, Jesus is the author or the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Talked about this a little bit last week, that faith is not something we do, not something we achieve. Faith is a gift of God. And we see it again in this week's text. Jesus is the author of our faith. He's the founder of our faith. We don't author our faith. We don't found our faith. We don't start our faith. It's gift. And it only gets better because it's not as if Jesus says, all right, here's faith. I'm giving you the gift of faith. Now get running and I hope you make it to the finish line. You're on your own. No, that's not what our text says. Jesus is both the author and the perfecter of our faith. He gives us the gift of faith through His Word and through His Supper as we run the race that is set before us. He strengthens us. He sustains us. He forgives us when we get tripped up by our sin. And He is the one that is going to perfect our faith. He is the one that is going to bring us across the finish line. He is the one that's going to receive us and welcome us at the finish line. Welcome us to that feast of victory. That feast of victory in His kingdom that never ends. And this great cloud of witnesses that surround us are always going to be pointing us to Jesus. Because it was His cross and what He did at the cross that any of this is possible. That any of this is given to us. Again, our text says about Jesus, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Now usually when we think about Jesus suffering and bleeding and dying, the word joy doesn't come to mind. And yet that's what our scripture says for today. Not because Jesus going to the cross was easy for him. No, it was difficult. But he counted it a joy. Because he knew why he was doing it. Doing it for you. Conquering death for you. Opening the way to everlasting life for you and for all His saints. 
by his resurrection from the dead. Going to the cross for you so he could be the author and the perfecter of your faith. Dying for you so that you can live forever with him and with all the saints in glory. And so our scripture for today calls on us to look. To look to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And of course, that's the most important thing. As we run the race that is set before us, knowing that we're constantly being tempted to turn away from the Lord, to veer off course, to quit running, we need to keep on looking to Jesus. But then we can also look to the saints that surround us. This great cloud of witnesses for encouragement to keep on running, to keep on pressing on for the prize. Because like we talked about in the little sermon, we are connected. Connected to Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith, and connected to one another as the communion of saints. All believers on earth and also that cloud of witnesses in heaven. That cloud of witnesses that now includes Edifé and Stephanie. And so keep on running. Shed the sin. And whatever else is keeping you from running that race with endurance. Keep on looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Keep on looking to that great cloud of witnesses for encouragement, seeking to follow their example. Knowing that it is by the grace of God and only by the grace of God that we will have the strength and the endurance to make it to the finish line. So we look forward to that glorious day when we are reunited with those that we know and love who are already with the Lord. When we look, we look forward to that glorious day when, by the grace of God, we will be numbered with all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. This time I invite you to turn to page two in the bulletin as we continue with the commemoration of the